confirming that the 14-year-old shot and killed outside of a southern Wisconsin middle school was carrying a pellet gun. The news has local law enforcement and school officials issuing a warning. I suspect that every day is going to get just a little bit better. Our legs are going to get stronger, and we're going to continue to blaze new trails as this district has always done. Tonight at 9, how law enforcement and school officials are working to ensure safety and what you can do to help. Use them at home, use them in, in parks or places that are not nowhere near a school um, so that it's not confused as being, you know, a target to, to our, our staff or our students. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 9 tonight. Over the weekend, the Wisconsin Department of Justice announced the 14-year-old student who was fatally shot by police in Mount Horeb was armed with a long barrel pellet gun. And tonight, the Green Bay Area Public School District is issuing a warning to families and to students. Fox 11's Marlo Lundak has the district's message in this Project Education report. The Green Bay School District is expressing concern with district families surrounding toy guns. Officials say they've seen a rise in Orbeez guns being used near school grounds. They're basically little pellets that you place in water and they absorb the water and they become like a water-filled pellet. But with some of these weapons, you can shoot them at a pretty high rate of speed. So depending on how close you are to the person you're shooting, there can be injuries that occur. The district safety and security manager tells Fox 11 none of the toy weapons have been found inside school buildings, but they have been used at parks near several schools in the district. It can create some trauma, not only for our students, but for our families and their parents. If, if a building gets locked down and they think there's uh, you know, gun violence going on at the school, we just had the situation down in Mount Horeb. So um, as this was happening a, a couple times in the last couple of days, we decided that we wanted to send out some communication to our families. On Monday afternoon, Fox 11 witnessed a student carrying one of the toy guns, a brightly colored one, at a park on the city's east side. To be clear, what the student did was not illegal. However, the district is using the tragedy in Mount Horeb as a reminder that even toy weapons can lead to unintended consequences. But imagine that someone driving by sees a bunch of kids running around with guns that may look real, and they call the police, and now multiple police officers show up with their actual weapons drawn, and if a, a student or a person, you know, makes the wrong move or, um, you know, in a threatening manner and the police respond, I mean, something terrible could happen. And district officials tell me that they have warned about these toy weapons in the past and they reiterated today that if students are found inside any district building with one of these toy weapons, they will be disciplined. In Green Bay, Marlo Lundak, Fox 11 News. And once again, in the letter to parents, the district reiterates that the students will be disciplined if they are caught at school with one of these types of toy weapons. You can read that entire letter within Marlowe's story on our website at fox11online.com. There was a letter sent out to parents and families today about school safety when it comes to bringing toy weapons to school and these things called Orbeez guns. Tell me about this message that was sent out. What's going on? So we had a couple of incidents recently where um, there were people in the parks um, that were using the Orbeez guns. They were playing games with each other with Orbeez guns, but the parks are adjacent to our schools and it ultimately um, got close enough to our schools where um, we became aware of it. So the idea behind uh, sending out the, the letter to our parents and our families was that we wanted to make them aware that um, you know, when it comes to board policy and when it comes to you know, weapons and safety of schools, you know, those types of toy guns are not allowed on our campuses and we don't want them to be brought to parks that are near our schools where um, it then can, um, you know, eventually get near our schools. Um, we've got uh, situations where, um, you know, things like that can happen and you've got school safety on their minds all the time and if there's people running around playing with toy guns but they don't look like toy guns or they mistake them as a real gun, that can, uh, you know, set off things in our buildings, you know, securing our buildings, locking them down. Um, it can create some trauma, not only for our students, but for our families and their parents. If, if a building gets locked down and they think there's, uh, you know, gun violence going on at the school, we just had the situation down in Mount Horeb. So um, as this was happening a, a couple times in the last couple of days, we decided that we wanted to send out some communication to our families. Um, this, is, this has been a situation that we've addressed in the past. Um, and we've sent out similar communication, letting you know everyone know that 
if you bring an Orvis gun to school, it's going to be treated as if it were a regular weapon when it comes to the discipline process for the school. Now, the level of discipline that you could get is going to depend on what kind of um, interruption or disruption it causes in our buildings. It can be anywhere from suspension up to expulsion, depending on that type of disruption. So um, we, we want our parents to you know, be able to understand where we're coming from, maybe have conversations with their, their kids and let them understand that you know, there's a right place to play with those things and near a school in today's society is not the right place to do it because um, we would hate for um, them to be playing with these weapons and uh, someone mistake them for a real gun and the police get called and the police arrive and you know, something terrible could happen. Um, a lot of times these weapons are sold in multiple colors that are easily identifiable as a toy, but kids modify them. They paint them, they take off the parts that are supposed to be bright orange or bright pink or bright red to make it look like it's not a real weapon. And when they change that and repaint them, they can look like real weapons. And people that aren't trained or don't know might not recognize that they're actually a toy gun. Police officers might not know that they're a toy gun when they respond and you know they would respond appropriately and you know the last thing that we want in our community is for a tragedy to happen where um, a student or you know uh, anyone else that was in our parks near our schools you know uh, was injured from these guns or in a police response if something tragedy would happen a terrible would happen as far as like them being shot by a police officer or something like that because they weren't sure what it was so to be clear these these toy guns were not found anywhere inside any of the district schools no nothing okay. was inside the district schools they were in parks near the school and they kind of made their way onto our campus um, and we um, you know they were addressed by that building with the people that were involved with it but we just felt that uh, it was important for us to get a message out to everybody uh, to let them know that they're not welcome in our buildings and in our grounds and to make sure that you know they're having those conversations with their with their students that you know that might be playing with them there's a lot of them out there right we understand that they're toys and that they're recreational but there's a time and a place for those types of things and on our school campuses and on our school grounds is not where we want them mm -hmm. and for people who are wondering what the heck an orbeez gun is can you kind of explain your knowledge about them yeah so an orbeez gun is it's you know imagine like a nerf gun right it looks similar to that where they might you know um, have a really distinct shape and size to them and they usually have some larger chamber that contains the Orbeez I don't even know what you call them but they're basically little pellets that you place in water and they absorb the water and they become like a water filled pellet but with some of these weapons you can shoot them at a pretty high rate of speed so depending on how close you are to the person you're shooting there can be injuries that occur um, and you know we're trying to avoid those injuries not only to our staff and students but um, also just the the trauma that these things cause right um, you know if there's if there's kids on their way to or from school or in, you know around campus and somebody comes out and starts shooting at them with an Orbeez gun they might not recognize what it is at first they might think it's it's a real weapon um, so just making sure that um, people are aware of what they are and that that we don't want them on our campus so um. in this day and age it kind of seems like it would be common sense not to have something like this in or near or around a school but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget that these are kids and, right. and they don't have the same thought process as adults but how scary is it to think about the fact that's that a student might think that they're just having fun and being harmless you know if they stick it in their backpack they want to show their friends at school and then there's this whole line of unintended consequences that could that could come after it I don't know if you have children or anything, but how scary of a thought of is that, you know, as somebody who works in the district with these kids every day? Yeah, I mean, imagine, you know, your, your child going to the park to play with friends and if they've got the Orbeez guns, right, and they're going to play. But imagine that someone driving by sees a bunch of kids running around with guns that may look real and they call the police. And now multiple police officers show up with their actual weapons drawn. And if a, a student or a person, you know, makes the wrong move or, um, you know, in a threatening manner and the police respond, I mean, something terrible could happen. So we want to make sure that, you know, the parents and the students understand that there's a time and place, right? Um, now, I'm sure there's lots of parents that have conversations with their kids about when the right place and the appropriate time to use them is, um, and maybe they bring them without their parents knowing. So we want to make sure that, you know, they're having those conversations and 
um, you know, trying to do the best they can to let their kids know that um, it's not okay, but also understanding that if they do get brought to our school, there could be consequences and that could lead up to expulsion depending on the circumstances. Um, it's really no different than, you know, someone making, you know, an online threat of that nature to one of our schools. We're going to investigate it and depending on the nature of the threat and the disruption it causes and the fear it can cause to our, our students and our families, you know, maybe they don't want to send their kids to school because of things like this. You know, that's all going to be taken into consideration when those things happen. So keep them away from the schools, you know, use them at home, use them in, in parks or places that are not nowhere near a school um, so that it's not confused as being, you know, a target to, to our, our staff or our students. So you guys obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, have this message out to, you sent this email out to all the families in the district. Um, there's no real way to ensure that parents will talk to their kids. Always, that's always the hope, of course. Is there any, I mean, like, is there any consideration for district leaders going into classrooms and, and telling this information to students just on the off chance that maybe their parents missed the email or they just didn't talk to their kids about it? Is that any part of the thought process here? Yes, we have discussed about having, um, in most of our schools, they all have um, morning meeting or advisory time during the day or they do announcements. So there's been discussion about um, having this message shared with, with the, the morning message so that um, you know, it's announced to all the students in the buildings. Um, this might not be on every school level, on an elementary, it might just be on a secondary level. Um, but yeah, that's been a discussion to make sure that the message um, is received and not to mention you know, the news you know, covering this is gonna make people more aware of it as well. Mm -hmm. What are we missing? Is there any part of this that that's important? I don't think so. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing, right? Like, you know, they can bring them in the parks and it's, that's, you know, I don't think it's illegal, but we have a lot of schools in the district that are attached to city parks. So they're, although the park isn't necessarily our property, you know, when you're, when you're there and you're having fun with kids, right? The, the kids eventually work their way towards the school. So we're just trying to make sure that everyone understands that they're not, that we don't want them on our, on our school properties. Mm -hmm.